Uh, it didn't record. We're picking up where we are. I'm confessing that the teacher said right here on video can be put out on YouTube for the whole world to see. But, uh, we're starting right here on verse 13. Uh, so the Passover, Passover of the Jews was at hand and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Uh, and so what do we see? And, and we talked about how um, what do we see about Jesus? These were written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Uh, because truly, John writes this book so that we would see that Jesus is the Messiah, that Jesus is God. And so that makes this story and every other story not a story about the story, but a story about Jesus. So this isn't a story about the temple, and it isn't even a story about the cleansing of the temple. It's a story about Jesus and how it shows us that he is Messiah. And so uh, the book gave us three d different sets, so three different pairs of things. And those, those, each of those two things is paired together, right? Um, and the first one was the boldness and strength of our Lord. And as I told you yesterday, that's true. But it's not what's important about this. That Christ wasn't a sissy isn't really on the top ten list of what was important about Jesus. But we also see the holiness and the wrath of God. And I told you that God doesn't wink at our sin. Our sin, we tend to think that our sin is innocuous. Meaning it, it doesn't, it, it's not that big a deal. It's not really like, yeah, but it's not like it's hurting me. And yet it is. In ways that we can't even see, sometimes in ways that we don't even understand. Because any any sin puts a wedge between us and God or, or, or uh, causes a, a more distance between us and God, especially unconfessed sin, especially sin that we wink at and we go, yeah, well, it's And we excuse away our sin. Look, all of that sin is the reason Jesus died. So all of it, all of it, is causes us has ramifications. All of it has ramifications for our lives, uh, and so we see the holiness and the wrath of God. And God will deal with sin. He has dealt with it on the cross, and He will deal with it someday. And then finally, we see the deity and authority of Christ. That um, uh, that He had the authority to do this. They ask Him. Where do you get your authority? What, what sign will you give us? Um, and, and his very authority is what, is what is doing this. And so we see the deity and the authority of Christ. So how do we see the deity of Christ? How do we see that Christ is God in this passage? Well, the first thing is that he calls the temple my father's house. The temple was the place where God dwelt. And if God is his father, then that's also his house too, right? You live with your parents? Is their house your house? Yeah, they may be paying the mortgage, right? But it's your house too. And so he says, it's my, this is my father's house. And he was jealous to preserve and to protect his father's house. And that was, uh, that was foreseen, that was prophesied in the Old Testament as, as this passage told us. And then Jesus also claims that he will raise his own body from the dead. Now, here again, we see this common theme in John of misunderstanding. He says, um, he says to them, uh, tear down the temple, and I will raise it back in three days. And he says, you, you destroy this temple, and I will raise it back in three days. Now, he wasn't talking about the physical temple. The physical temple was the place where God dwelt with man. And Jesus, when he was on earth, was the place where God dwelt with man. So he's likening himself to the temple. And he's saying, you crucify me, and I'll raise myself in three days. Only God can do that. If he's going to raise the dead, it must mean that he's God. Because only God can raise the dead. Now, interestingly, when he, we get to his trial, he's going to be accused of saying, 
I will destroy the temple and I will raise it again. So again, there's misunderstanding. Again, there's misrepresentation of Jesus. Because he didn't say, I will destroy the temple. He said, you destroy it. You destroy me. You destroy, you crucify me. And I will raise myself up. So um, Jesus is the temple in the sense that he was, when he was on earth, he was the place where God dwelt with man. Uh, and, uh, and so he is still the place where we meet with God. Uh, he is our mediator between us and God. And in that sense, he is the temple, which means that he is God. And then finally, it says that he knows all men. Now, this, this says that he knows all men. He knows women, too. Don't, you know, he knows all people. He knows what's inside them. He knows our thoughts. He knows our motivations. He knows everything about us, which means he's God, because only God is omniscient. Only God knows those things. So it means he's God. Let me ask you this. This practice that Jesus announced had been going on for some time and there were a lot of leaders there was Gamaliel and, and, and there was Caiaphas and there was Annas and there was Hillel there were a lot of Jewish leaders and none of them tried to stop it why didn't anybody say no this isn't right this is God's house why did it take this to get rid of of all of those merchants. Well, I just didn't want to. Why don't you clean your room when your mom asks you to clean your room? Because I don't want it. I'm fine with it the way it is, right? Okay, so my smelly underwear has been on the floor for six weeks, but I'm fine with that, right? I'm the one that has to live here. They were fine with it. They didn't want to do that. They were, they were profiting from it. Like, when you decide you want to rent some place for prom, you have to pay them to be there, right? So they were profiting off of it. It was good for them. It was helpful to them. They didn't want to. They knew what the purpose of the temple was. They knew that God's presence dwelt there. They knew that that was supposed to be a place where people worshiped and met with God. And they knew that what was going on was completely opposed to them. Which is why I think they doubled down and said, well, what authority do you have to do this? Ever done that to your parents? Probably you haven't, but I sure did. Right? Talk back, even though, we, like, inside you're going, oh, man, they're right. But then you go, well, make me, right? And they're like, where did that come from, right? Because you don't want to. And that's the way they were. They did not want uh, to restore the temple. And so Jesus did. Uh, now, in this passage, I'm going to go way back. In this passage, I'm going to show you something here. And I'm showing it to you because you're, we're going to see it on the quiz. It says, now, when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover feast, many believed in his name uh, when they saw the signs he was doing. But Jesus, on his part, did not entrust himself to them because he knew all people and needed no one to bear witness about man, for he himself knew what was in man. This word entrust, in the, in the King James, which is what your curriculum uses, the word is commit. This is a better word to entrust. So Jesus knows everything about everyone, which is part of being God. That's part of how we know that he is God. And so he knew their hearts. He knew they didn't care. He knew that they didn't want the temple to be restored to worship. Uh, but Jesus knew. Uh, he didn't entrust 
himself uh, to anyone, but he knew what was in everyone. So Christ knew that the people that that, that the people didn't believe him fully. That the that the um, money changers and the and the merchants and and the leadership didn't trust him. Didn't trust God. They wanted miracles, but they didn't want what he had to give them. So their belief wasn't real. It wasn't true. But God knows. Look, you are Christian teenagers. Let me put it back up. You are teenagers that come every day and sit for at least seven classes, if not eight classes, in a Christian school with Christian teachers. You likely come from a Christian home, which means you're going to church and you're going to youth group. But none of that makes you crazy. And I know we have students at our school that are doing all of those things. And their hearts are still hard. Why? Because nobody can use them. Your relationship with Jesus is just that. It's your relationship with Jesus. It's not your mama's, it's not your daddy's, it's not your grandparents. It's yours. And, and here's the thing. No one but you and God. You can do a good job of pretending. I did a good job of pretending. I was able to fool a lot of people, not my parents, my sisters, because they saw the real me at home. My pastors, my friends' parents, I could fool them. Can't fool God. The only people who know the true condition of our hearts are God. Jesus is the one to whom you can trust your life. He loves you. He's waiting for you. The only question is, will you entrust your life? So I want to humble you, but ask you, are you trusting Christ for your salvation? Are you trusting you or something else? Jesus is in fact not just Lord of the temple, but he is Lord of the universe. And he wants you to know. The rest is up to you. Father, thank you for this teaching about the temple, which is so much more than a story about whips and, and money changers and merchants. But it's about who you are and who you desire to be in our lives. And I pray that each of us would take that away from this lesson more than anything. I pray in Jesus' name. Okay, now we're going to do this quiz. I'm going to keep recording so that watching online and get the right answers to Okay, so I'm getting to the quiz here. Number one, during which Jewish holy day did Christ's cleansing of the temple occur? Passover. The Passover. Who was the first, uh, who, who first had a desire to build a temple for God? 
King David. And how long did it take to build that first temple? No? Uh, wait, what did you say? No? That's the second one, 46 years. Seven years, yeah, seven, seven and a half years. And who did Christ drive out of the temple with a whip? Merchants and money changers. Number five, who is the person to, who built the first temple? Solomon, C. Solomon. Six, the site of the first temple was Mount Moriah, C. Not meaning yes. Uh, the man who led the rebuilding of the temple after the Jews returned from captivity was not Ezra, Rubble. Rubble. See, or D. Ezra was the priest. Um, the part of the temple where Christ said, My sheep hear my voice, was. Solomon's porch, see? Uh, now here's that question uh, that I was talking about. The word commit uh, in this account means to, to be, trust, or if trust. Of course it says in trust, ESV. Well, no new reasons to uh, The phrase destroy this temple refers to Christ's Uh, death on the cross, D. The city that became Christ's earthly headquarters for his ministry was A. Capernaum. Now, list at least four of the six things about uh, the person uh, the person of Christ that we learned from the story of this cleansing. So, uh, two pairs of them. Now, here are your choices. Uh, boldness and strength, but I don't think that's the most important one. I'd rather you go with holiness and wrath and deity and authority, but any four, any two pairs is fine. Boldness and strength, holiness and wrath, deity and authority. We got that? I think we're going to do it again.